sapphire seas glinted like scattered jewels beneath the moonlight, mirroring the steely glint in the Grand Magus' eyes as he faced the colossal blue dragon. Her scales shimmered the color of a summer sky, reflecting the turmoil within him. I come seeking your aid, the Grand Magus rumbled, his voice heavy with urgency. My world withers, choked by the corruption of its lifeblood. I need your power, Sapphire, to cleanse it, to restore its vibrancy. The dragon lowered her head, her sapphire eyes scanning him with suspicion. And what makes you think I would lend you such power, mortal? She boomed, her voice echoing across the waves. Power like mine is not to be trifled with. You could easily twist it for your own ends. The Grand Magus met her gaze unflinchingly. You judge me harshly, Sapphire. I have sacrificed much, endured untold hardships, all to save my world. My intentions are pure. My desperation, real. Silence descended, broken only by the lapping of the waves. The sapphire dragon considered his words, her gaze searching his soul. The weight of this world's despair hung heavy in the air, palpable even to her ancient being. There is another way, she said, her voice softer now. A way that does not require sacrificing your own essence. Share your knowledge, Grand Magus. Teach your people to live in harmony with their lifeblood, not to control it. True change comes from within, not through borrowed power. The Grand Magus's chest tightened with frustration. Time was running out, and the dragon's offer, while noble, felt woefully inadequate. He yearned for a quicker, more decisive solution. I appreciate your wisdom, Sapphire, he said, his voice strained. But my people are blind to their folly. They need a jolt, a demonstration of power to awaken them. The dragon's eyes narrowed. Are you willing to risk becoming the very monster you seek to defeat in your quest for a swift solution? The question hung heavy in the air, forcing the Grand Magus to confront the darkness lurking within his own desires. He saw the reflection of his ambition in the dragon's wary gaze, a chilling glimpse of the path he teetered on. Taking a deep breath, he lowered his head in reluctant acceptance. You are right, Sapphire. I must seek another way, a way that does not compromise my integrity. Flicker of relief passed through the dragon's eyes. There is always hope, Grand Magus, she said, her voice softening. But true power lies not in taking, but in guiding and inspiring. Choose the path of wisdom, and you may yet save your world. The Grand Magus dropped his shoulders. Winding tendrils of wind swirled across his arms. While I seek not to become the monsters that came before me, I'll pay any price to restore my world. My family. The Grand Magus raised both arms and the power of the dragon already consumed into his being lashed out. The winding tendrils stretched forth before the sapphire dragon could react, and they enveloped her. The two powerful magical forces embarked on a battle of wills. The Grand Magus was determined to bring her into his fold, allowing him to be one step closer to saving his home. The Sapphire Dragon fought with all the ferocity of the raging sea. A massive storm began to brew around the pair as an unseen war waged between them. I've come to 
too far to give up now. I may not be forgiven for this. The word slid from his mouth through the grit of his teeth. But it will all be worth it in the end. The pain you and your siblings feel. It won't last forever. An explosion of rain and lightning filled the air between them. When the storm had settled, only one stood on the sandy shores of the small remote island. In the heart of the sea. In the heart of the Whispering Citadel, etched into the living Amethyst Mountain, lay the corridors. Whispers called it a library of worlds, a labyrinth of lost memories. Towering arches stretched as far as the eye could see, each gateway carved from obsidian and inlaid with stories woven in stained glass. Some shimmered with vibrant hues, depicting realms bathed in sunlight and joy. Others remained dark, etched with swirling grays and blacks hinting at forgotten tragedies. Among these ancient tales walked Alaria, an elven girl with hair the color of a blossoming cherry tree, braided into intricate knots that held the whispers of windswept meadows. A two-handed sword engraved with runes of forgotten power rested comfortably across her slender back. With emerald eyes, she scanned the endless corridors, searching for a spark, a pull that resonated with her destiny. She wandered past scenes of bustling cities built on clouds, where winged creatures soared, traded laughter, and sung with the stars. Each door presented a glimpse, a temptation to step through and explore, but none felt like home. Some, she noticed, had no glass at all, only a chilling emptiness behind the obsidian frame. Whispers spoke of worlds devoured by shadows, swallowed by the silence within. As she journeyed deeper, the whispers grew louder, guiding her towards a lone door standing apart from the others. Its frame resembled petrified roots, twisting and gnarled as if reaching for something unseen. Unlike its gleaming neighbors, it held no colorful story. Instead, swirling shades of gray and black formed at the base, depicting a twisting mass of energy that resembled the life stream. But its vibrant purples and blues had dulled choked by the shadows that crept upwards. The top half of the glass was shrouded in darkness, an ominous hint of green and black flames licking at the edges. Curiosity battled trepidation within Alaria. What story lay trapped within such an ominous portal? Could it hold the answer to the unease that gnawed at her soul? Hesitantly, she placed her hand on the cold obsidian, feeling a pull, a tug of fate, as she pushed, the door creaked open with a sigh, revealing a swirling vortex of darkness, pulsing with an unsettling energy. The obsidian labyrinth hummed around Avix, the weight of its secrets pressing on her already fractured mind. Her hand rested on the worn leather cover of the cortex of the creators, the source of her power and her torment. Its whispers filled her head, a cacophony of voices echoing the splintered facets of her own soul. Why wandered these dusty halls, sister? crooned Lila. The shimmering form of Avix's joy, her voice like tinkling bells. Surely brighter adventures await. We seek more than fleeting merriment, child, rumbled Zarek, the embodiment of Avix's wrath, a hulking figure in clad shadow. 
This world crumbles, poisoned by its own folly. The corridors offer sanctuary, not amusement. <sighs> Abic sighed, a sound of discordant blend of their arguments. She yearned for peace, a harmony within that mirrored the unity the book represented. But the cortex had fractured her, etching each emotion into a vivid persona. Lila the joyous, Zarak the wrathful, Kale the despairing, Avani the despondent. They were reflections, amplifying her emotions, making every decision a cacophony. As they debated, Avix's gaze fell upon a door unlike any other. Its stained glass remained blank, devoid of the vibrant scenes adorning the others. Yet, it emanated a chilling pool, a darkness that resonated with Kale, the part of her forever shrouded in grief. There, he rasped, a hollow echo in her thoughts, a world mirroring our pain, a reflection of our loss. Lila recoiled. No, we seek hope, not oblivion. The voices within clashed, each vying for control. Abix almost soundlessly drawn in. Her fingertips met with the cold obsidian, and the door hummed, recognizing the fractured power that dwelled within her. Are you sure, sister? Lila pleaded, her voice laced with fear. Abix closed her eyes, feeling the weight of responsibility. We were fractured here, she whispered. Perhaps here we can find our wholeness. Christoph Shindo, the Silver Serpent, felt the world shudder beneath his bare feet. He stood on the crumbling ruins of Goron's last watchtower, overlooking the once vibrant landscape. Where emerald forests once swayed, only barren stalks remained. Crystal clear rivers now ran gray and sluggish, reflecting the dying world above. The whispers spoke of the arcane torrent, its vibrant song choked by greed and unchecked magic, its colors fading into a chilling grayscale. Avia the Blue, her ebony eyes mirroring his turmoil, stood beside him. The whispers grow urgent, she said, her voice laced with dread. Goron's harmony fades. Kristoff had long anticipated this day, he had seen the telltale signs, the withering foliage, the dim skies, the frantic glint in the eyes of desperate sorcerers. His warning, like smoke on the wind, were ignored. There's one hope, he said, his voice firm, a spark of defiance igniting his gaze. The doors of Goron, they say they lead to another world. Avia. Ever the pragmatist narrowed her eyes. Legends and myths, Kristoff. Are we truly to gamble our fate on such fables? But Kristoff knew Goron's song wouldn't last. He spotted it then, on the horizon. A lone door, once shimmering with Goron's vitality, now a stark black wound against the dying landscape. The door to their only chance. This is our door, Avia. He said, his voice resolute. Goron may fade, but we will not. Together they approached the gaping void, the weight of a dying world on their shoulders. As they touched the obsidian frame, it pulsed with an ancient energy, the void shimmering with the kaleidoscope of colors and shadows. Ready? He asked, gripping Avia's hand. She met his gaze her lips forming a determined line. As ready as we'll ever be. 
With a burst of light, they were pulled through the void, leaving behind the dying symphony of Goron and entering the unknown realm of the corridors. Landing hard on the cold obsidian floor, they stood, taking in the sight around them. Towering arches stretched as far as the eye could see, each a gateway to a different world, a different story. Whispers swirled around them, a symphony of forgotten lives and hidden secrets. Where now? Avia asked, her voice echoing in the vastness. Kristoff looked at her, his eyes glinting with a mixture of apprehension and hope. Wherever fate leads us, he replied, Goron may be lost, but our journey has just begun. Together, the Silver Serpent and the Blue set off into the corridors, their footsteps swallowed by the endless labyrinth. Each door held a possibility, a promise of danger and discovery. In their hearts, they carried the ashes of Goron, but also the embers of hope, ready to face whatever the corridors had to offer. Their story, like countless others, trapped in the obsidian frames, was only beginning. The corridors hummed with an energy unseen but keenly felt. Towering obsidian arches stretched before Kristoff and Avia, each a gateway to another world, each adorned with a story woven in stained glass. Some doors shimmered with vibrant hues, depicting celestial cities bathed in starlight or lush, underwater kingdoms teeming with life. Others, like the one they had entered through, stood muted, devoid of color, hinting at forgotten tragedies. Kristoff ran his hand along the obsidian frame of a vibrantly colored door, depicting a world where winged creatures soared through endless swirling clouds. It's tempting, he mused, a world beyond gravity where magic dances in the winds. Avia studied a different door, its glass depicting a sprawling desert city carved from sandstone, the air shimmering with heat. Less whimsical, she observed, but intriguing nonetheless. Perhaps they hold knowledge of manipulating the arcane torrent in such harsh environments. They moved on, passing a door where the glass had dulled, depicting a once magnificent forest now choked by creeping vines. A cautionary tale. Kristoff murmured, a grim reminder of Goron's fate. They stopped before a door unlike any other. Its glass held no images, only swirling shades of sapphire and turquoise, the colors of the arcane torrent in its purest form. Strange, Avia mused, her hand reaching out to touch the cool surface. No story, no glimpse of the world beyond. Kristoff studied the door, his intuition tingling. Perhaps the story lies not in the past, but in the future, he said, his voice laced with awe. A world yet to be written, shaped by those who enter. Avia considered his words, her brow furrowed. Intriguing, but also risky. We walk blind into such a world. He nodded, understanding her concern. Indeed, but Goron offered no other options. Here, we have a chance. Not just for survival, but to rebuild, to learn from our mistakes. Silence hung between them, heavy with the weight of their decision. The corridors offered countless possibilities, each with its own risks and rewards. They were refugees, clinging to the wreckage of their world, yet within them burned the embers of hope a yearning to build anew. Finally, Avia met his gaze, her eyes reflecting the swirling colors of the door. Very well, she said, her voice resolute. Let us step into the unknown, write our own story in this blank canvas. With a shared nod, they placed their hands on the sapphire and turquoise door. It hummed in response, as if acknowledging their choice. Then, with a blinding flash of light, the door swung open, revealing a swirling vortex of energy, a gateway to a world as yet unwritten. Hand in hand, 
the Silver Serpent and Avia the Blue stepped through. Leaving behind the whispers of the corridors and venturing into the heart of their own uncertain future. The corridors hummed with forgotten magic, an endless labyrinth of stained glass gateways whispering tales of distant worlds. Rowan, an elven bard with a twinkle in his eyes and a mischievous song on his lips, stumbled through one such gateway by accident thanks to a misplaced step in a particularly slippery lichen patch. Well, fuck me, he exclaimed, dusting himself off. Looks like your boy Rowan just landed himself in another dimension. If this is Wind's doing, I'm going to give him a kick where his good berries should be. He thought to himself, Does Wind have good berries? Probably not, that old viney bastard. He strummed a jaunty tune on his lute, its melody echoing through the cavernous hall. Each towering door, adorned with vibrant scenes or ominous emptiness beckoned him closer. He stopped before a door depicting a bustling underwater city, merfolk shimmering amidst coral castles. Sounds fishy, he quipped, tapping his foot to a seafaring shanty. Then his gaze fell on a door depicting rolling green hills under a double sun. Two suns, now that's a hangover I can relate to. He chuckled, strumming a bluesy riff. But not all doors held light-hearted amusement. He approached a door with swirling shades of gray, depicting a once mighty kingdom now in ruins. Bleak, but maybe they appreciate a good dirge, he mused, humming a somber melody. His lute's melancholic notes hung heavy in the air. He stopped before a door unlike any other, Its glass held no images, only swirling shades of sapphire and turquoise, the colors of the arcane torrent in its purest form. Well, I'll be. It looks like that place Kristoff jumped into. What did he describe it like? His skin being ripped apart or some nonsense? Rowan shook his head, dusting off the memories. This one doesn't have a story yet, it seems. A place. He strummed a regal and upbeat melody. Well, Rowan can be the king! He pushed forward through the door and vanished into the world beyond. flickering torchlight danced across Declan Derringer's weathered face, revealing a mixture of fear and defiance as he faced the imposing figure of the Grand Magus. The air crackled with raw power, the remnants of the battle leaving the cavern floor smoking and littered with debris. With a flick of his wrist, the Grand Magus sent a tendril of dark energy toward Declan, but barely dodged it, feeling the heat sear past him. Why? Declan roared, his voice echoing through the cavern. Why have you betrayed everything you stood for? Why steal the dragon's power? The Grand Magus paused, his eyes glowing with an unsettling inner fire. I do not betray, he rumbled, his voice deep and heavy like thunder. I sacrifice. And then, He narrated a tale that seemed impossible. A tale of a distant world bathed in sunlight the color of amethysts. A world where magic flowed freely, not in controlled spells, but in the very lifeblood of the planet, the life stream. He spoke of his wife, her laughter echoing in the wind, and his son, whose eyes glittered with the boundless curiosity of youth. But the harmony was fragile. 
as generations honed their magic, their desires grew, their ambitions fueled by the boundless life stream. They tried to control it, to bend it to their will. Slowly a darkness crept in, twisting the once vibrant flow to a stagnant, polluted entity. The sun dimmed, life dwindled, and his son, now a pale shadow of his former self, succumbed to the illness. My magic couldn't save him, the Grand Magus continued, his voice thick with emotion. But I saw a chance here, in this world. Dragons, ancient and potent, their magic raw and untamed. If I could consume it, purify it with my own will, perhaps I could cleanse the life stream back home and save my world. His gaze held Declan's, boring into his soul. Do you understand? I do not seek power for myself, but for a chance to redeem myself, to bring back the light to my son's eyes. Declan was torn. The Grand Magus's pain was palpable. Desperation raw. But the fear remained. The knowledge of the harm he had already inflicted, the innocent lives lost in his thirst for power. Silence filled the cavern, broken only by the dripping of water. The torch sputtered, shadows shifting, leaving them both at the precipice of a choice. Would Declan trust the Grand Magus' story? Believe in his twisted redemption? Or would he try to stop him at the cost of condemning another world to darkness? <laughs>